first want to say thank you very much for allowing me to uh, speak tonight. I'd like to get kind of down where everybody else is. So, uh, uh, also, uh, I'm just wondering how you guys talk to one another. Do you talk to one another by text? Do you call one another? Do you uh, send one another notes? Do you write things down? Uh, you send letters. What kinds of ways do you communicate? Text, call one another, texting, Facebook, Snapchat, all of those kinds of things. And so let me tell you that um, you guys get telephone calls, but guess what? God calls you. Amen. Oh. Well, that's kind of interesting, isn't it? We're going to talk about a few people that God called. So you'll excuse me, I don't have an iPhone. My iPhone is dying, so I have great index cards. I always fall back. <clears throat> okay, so lots of you already know about Abraham. And what do you know about Abraham? He was. He freed the slaves. I don't know. Okay. Um, God called Abraham. Okay. God actually called Abraham. Abraham and his wife Sarah were living with Abraham's parents. You know how that is. Live with your parents. But guess what? God said, "Come on, Abraham." You have to move. I want you to follow me. So Abraham and Sarah followed God. Now, uh, God promised Abraham that he would make his heirs as many as the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. But um, Abraham followed God and he loved God. But he didn't have any descendants, so he didn't know how that was going to happen. So, <clears throat> finally, uh, Sarah decided that she would give her handmaid to Abraham, and they had uh, Ishmael, but that wasn't the same as Abraham and Sarah having a baby themselves. <coughs> so, finally, you'll never guess how old was Abraham when they finally had Isaac. 100 years old. How long have you waited for something that, that, that somebody else has promised you? Have you waited like a week? Maybe two weeks? A year, maybe? God, I mean, Abraham waited probably about, 20, about 75 years for God's promise to come through. But it did. And when Isaac was old enough, guess what? God said, okay, Isaac, or okay, Abraham, I want you to sacrifice your only son. Wow. I'm sure Abraham was just going, my goodness, what am I going to do? But I know he trusted God. I know he trusted God. So he thought, no matter what happens, no matter what happens, God is going to still come through with his promise. So Isaac and Abraham go up, and, and, Isaac, and Abraham is just about to raise his hand to sacrifice Isaac. And what happens? There's a ram over here in the, in the bushes, and they use that ram to sacrifice to God, and God kept his promise. Don't you think that Abraham felt like God called him? Don't you feel like God called Abraham? So um, let's let's move down. The, so so Isaac had Jacob, and Jacob had Joseph. How many you guys have heard of Joseph, haven't you? Joseph was kind of, he was a teenager. He kind of was um, a little boastful, maybe, because he told his brothers his dream, 
And he told his brothers that they were going to bow down to him. You know, older brothers just don't like that. So what happened was, you guys, you guys have like had some troubles with your brothers or sisters, haven't you? So, but these brothers, they were already jealous of Joseph. And what happened was, they said, okay, Joseph, we don't like what you said to us. We're going to tie you up. We're going to put you in a pit. Now, I know you guys don't do that. But we're going to put you in a pit, and pretty soon, the Ishmaelites came by and took Joseph with them to Egypt. Now, here's Joseph. He's just a teenager. He doesn't know anybody. But do you think the Lord just left him and he never came back and got Joseph? No. <coughs> Joseph always was with the Lord. The Lord was always with Joseph. So <clears throat> here's what happened is that Joseph, because he loved the Lord, he was always a favored, a, a favored person in the, the Egyptian household of the king. And he was always, he always got the best place. He was in Potiphar's house. And then someone lied on Joseph and he was thrown in prison. In prison. So Joseph, he could have had a really bad attitude, but he decided not to. He wanted to follow the Lord. So what happened was that while he was, while he was in prison, the baker and the butcher... Right? The baker, the baker and the butcher um, both had dreams. Joseph interpreted the dreams. And um, whenever, it, whenever it actually came to pass, one went back to the king's household and the other one died. But they forgot to tell the king about Joseph. But that's okay because just at the right time, they remembered and told the king. Because the king had a dream. And Joseph interpreted that dream. He didn't take any of the he didn't take any of the credit for it. He said, "My Lord gave me this the answer to this dream." You know that interpretation. The place where Joseph was at that particular time. Where did that put Joseph? He wasn't the first in line. He wasn't the king. But he was the second in line over all of Egypt. Who put Joseph there? God did. He called him for just a particular time, right? So let's talk about let's talk about Moses. So I'm trying to kind of move through here because I want you to see that God called people who weren't perfect. Okay? Now, Moses, he was actually a really blessed little kid because uh, all of the, lot, lots of the little Jewish babies were killed that were male about the same time that Moses was uh, little. But he, his mother put him in a river and the Pharaoh's daughter picked him up and put him in, his, in their own house in the kingdom. Wow, that's a pretty good deal. So Moses grew up as a Egyptian. So he, he knew how to do things in the kingdom. He knew who people were in the kingdom. He knew how things worked in the kingdom. But here's what, then what happened is that Moses saw how the Egyptians were treating the Israelites. And he wasn't very fond of that. So one day, one of them was really misbehaving towards an Israelite, and he killed them. Wow! He moved. He fled to the far side of the desert. I don't know where the far side of the desert is, but it's a really long ways away, and no one's around. Here's the thing is, Moses thought he was really safe. He didn't have to worry about anything. Nobody was going to bother him there. He was comfortable. Have you ever gotten to a place where you don't care whether anybody bothers you or not? You're just really comfortable and you don't really have to do anything. <coughs> well, do you think God was satisfied with where Moses was? He had already brought Moses to where? To the desert. 
But guess what? Now he's going to take Moses back to Egypt. And why would he take Moses back to Egypt? Because his people were still in slavery. What did Moses know? Moses knew how about where the kingdom was. He knew all about the kingdom. He'd been there. He knew the people there. So he was a, a good person for the Lord to call to take his people out of Egypt. Moses was called by God to do that specific thing. Okay, let's talk about Moses' assistant, Joshua. When Moses died, Joshua was Moses' assistant. Guess what? Joshua had, had always followed Moses. He had always done what Moses asked him to do. He had been one of the ten, ten spies, and he was really courageous then. But, now, but Moses was around then. So whenever now Joshua's getting ready to take Moses' place, and what do you think God is going to tell Joshua? He's going to say, Joshua, be strong and courageous. Gabe, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Whatever you're doing, Austin, be strong and courageous. Here's the thing is... <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> I hit it with my hand. I'm sorry. Uh, be, <clears throat> so be strong and courageous. Joshua had a big job, and that was they were getting ready to tear down the, the big town of Jericho. It was huge. Do you know that the way they accomplished that was marching around that city for seven days. Six of those days they walked, marched around one time. But on the seventh day, they decided that they were going to march. God told them to march around seven times. And what were they going to do on the seventh time? They were going to blow the trumpets and they were going to shout. And, and then the walls were going to come tumbling down, right? They didn't fall out. They fell in. Who, who made that happen? God did. Do you think that God called Joshua to do that particular thing? I think he did. I think he did. So let's talk about let's talk about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Who knows them? Who were they? They were three teenagers who were in Persia. And, and they uh, actually were uh, working for the king. And the king asked everybody to bow down before this giant idol. And, and what did those three guys say? They said, no, we're not going to do it. We're not going to do it. And we don't care. It, we're, you can go ahead and throw us in the furnace. It's okay. Because God is going to rescue us, and if He does, it doesn't. We're still not going to. We're still not going to bow down in front of that idol. That's right. And so the king throws them, or has his guys throw them in the furnace. And what does the king rush back to see? Oh, he has he has a change of heart, and he's going to go get those kids out of the furnace. But what does he see? He sees four people in there, doesn't he? Who does he see? He sees Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and someone who looks like the Son of God. Now, what do you think the king, what, do you think that that changed the king's mind about, and his perception about those people who were there? Who did God call to do that? Who did God call to go through that? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yeah, they, they walked out of the furnace. They didn't even have any singed hair. The hair wasn't even singed, but the people who opened the door to the furnace, all of them were killed. But they walked out without one hair on their head being damaged. Okay, let's talk a little bit about a few people in the New Testament. So, <clears throat> I'm, I'm skipping several. You guys will be proud of me. Let's see. 
let's see here. Okay. So, um, the fishers of the the individuals who were fishermen. Who were they? Peter and John. They're fishermen. And this stranger comes up on the bank of the of uh, the uh, Galilee and says, hey, you might want to just throw your nets on the other side. They don't know him. And they say, look, we've been fishing all night. We're stinky. We're sweaty. We don't want to do that. He said, well, if you throw your, throw your nets on the other <laughs> side, you'll find out that, that the um, that your your boats will be full of fish, and sure enough, that's what happened. So then they come when, once they get back to the shore, they go, "Who are you?" And it, Jesus said, "You know, I am I am Jesus, and I'm going to make you fishers of men." Do you think he called them? I think he called them. He was right there at that particular time when they were coming in. He was waiting for that particular thing to say. So there was another disciple whose name was Nathaniel. He's a little bit less known. And um, Nathaniel was called by Philip. How many of you remember who Philip? Philip was one of the disciples. Nathaniel was called by Philip. And uh, Philip said, come and see the Messiah. Come and see this Jesus. And, and so Nathaniel comes and Jesus calls him by name. He said, Nathaniel. He called him Nathaniel. And Nathaniel said, how did you know my name? He said, I knew you while you were standing under the fig tree. So Jesus already knew Nathaniel. He already knew that Nathaniel was coming. He was calling Nathaniel. He was calling him. So what about, oh, now most of us know about Zacchaeus. Almost all of us know the story about Zacchaeus. But, so, Zacchaeus was a tax collector. He was uh, not very, he was not a very honest tax collector. And he very likely took money that wasn't his. And he had, a, he had interest about Jesus. And he heard that Jesus was coming to his area and he wanted to see him, but he was short. He couldn't see anybody. He couldn't see anything. And so he said, I'm going to climb up in this tree. And um, so, so when Jesus comes along, he goes to the tree and he looks up and he says, Zacchaeus, he calls him by name. He calls Zacchaeus by name and he said, Zacchaeus, come down from there. I'm going to go to your house today. And Zacchaeus immediately recognized that Jesus, after when he went to his house, that, that Jesus was who he was. And he said, I'm going to give back the money. I'm going to give it, give it back in more than what I took. So Zacchaeus was called by Jesus, wasn't he? Okay, I'm getting close here. I have two more. Don't count. Okay, what about the woman? What about... The woman at the well. Do you know that um, we don't know what her name is? She, she, they never, her name is never mentioned. Uh, but Jesus went at noon. It was the heat of the day. He went through Samaria. That's not a normal thing for a Jewish person to do. To go through Samaria. He went at noon. It was the hottest time of the day. He knew that that woman was going to be at the well. He knew. And so when she got there, uh, he asked her for a drink of water. And he said, you know, uh, Jewish people don't ask us for a drink of water because uh, they're just, we're just not friends. And, um, and Jesus said, you know, if you drink my water, you'll never, have, you'll never be thirsty again. And she's, she went, um, okay. Um, and he said, go, go get your husband. I want to, I want to speak to your husband. And she said, I'm not married. 
And then, guess what he said to her? He said, I know you're not married, but you have had five husbands, you've had five husbands, and you're not married to the person that you're living with now. And she was astounded. She knew immediately who Jesus was. She knew immediately that he loved her. And do you know what she did then? She went back to her village and invited everybody to come and, and see Jesus. Do you think that God knew, that Jesus knew, she was going to be right there, right then. He met her there. Do you know that he knew, Austin, that you were going to be here tonight? He knew that you were going to be here. He knew Dakota was going to be here. He knew Kristen was going to be here. He knew because tonight he wants you to know how much he loves you, how much he's calling you to be what he wants you to be. We talked earlier about how we talk to one another, how we communicate with one another. How do we do that? We have to talk to one another. So if we were going to talk with the Lord, how would we do that? How would we know what the Lord wants us to do? Let me tell you that the Lord is calling each one of you, each one of you, calling you certainly to be a Christian, calling you uh, to be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. What does that mean? He's calling you to that. What would that mean? That, that means that you're hungering after God and the way that God sees you is through Jesus Christ. He sees you that way. He sees you in, in your, he sees all of your faults and still he loves you with all of his heart. Do you know that his, that every one of you he knew before you were ever born. He knows the number of hairs on your head. He knows and he, and your name is written in the in his palm. Your name is written in his palm. Let me tell you how you think that Jesus Christ is going to call you. You think that maybe one of these days you're going to just go, oh, oh, I think I know what I'm supposed to do. Do you know that this is what God will do? Is He will put a hunger in your heart for a particular thing. He will put a hunger in your heart for a particular thing. And, and then He will say, Joseph, you know that thing that you really like to do? Well, I want you to give that to me. I want you to do that in my honor. For me, I never thought I was very good at anything. I, I didn't, I always wondered, how in the world is God going to use me? What in the world can I do? And gradually, day by day, if you, if you first of all, have a relationship with God. Number that's number one. How do you have a relationship with God? You, you have to communicate with them. Sometimes that means that you're reading the word. Sometimes that means you're praying. That means sometimes you're listening to someone speak about the Lord. But you have to have a relationship with Him. Then He's going to put things in your life which are going to be meaningful to you. But he already knows what the desires of your heart are. He already knows. And so whenever you get to the place whenever that you are seeking the Lord, those that calling will come to you. That, that ability to do something that nobody else can do is going to come to you. He's calling every one of you this evening, he's calling Hannah, he's calling Aaron, he's calling Alon. He's calling all of you because he loves you. He just wants to have a relationship with you. And you guys are the ones who have that ability to make that happen. God is already there, just like we were singing about tonight. 
He's, he's pursuing you. He's leaving the 99 to come after you. Mm -hmm. But it, you, it has to be your idea. It has to be your choice. Your choice to follow after him and pursue him. Um, I think I'm finished, Pastor. I, I